With us today is a lawyer who is a graduate of economics and political science from the University of Michigan, a Juris Doctor from the UP College of Law. He took up his Master's in Law at the University of London and he was a professor in UP where he taught constitutional law and public international law for 15 years. And in his practice, he represented the victims of Maguindano Massacre, the family of Jennifer Laude, and environmental advocate Jerry Ortega of Palawan. He was the principal author of the Universal Healthcare Bill and the former presidential spokesperson. We have with us Attorney Harry Roque. Hi po! Hello Tony! It's really a pleasure to be here. Lumaki po pala kayo sa Pasay. Yes, taga Pasay po talaga ako. Um, I was born and raised in Pasay, and I only left Pasay when I was already in high school. Mm -hmm. Tapos yes. yung nanay niyo po ay teacher, tapos yung tatay niyo ay lay minister, hindi po ba? Correct po, no? My mom was a public school teacher. Later on, she became a professor in UP, and she worked abroad, no? She was one of the first Filipinos offered a, um, a permanent post at the University of Chicago, which is a very prestigious university. Pero because of that, at the time kasi hindi kami nadala sa Amerika kaagad because of immigration restrictions, we became an OFW family. So for about five years, we did not live with our mother because she was working in the U.S. Tapos anim po kayo magkakapatid? Lahat sila nasa abroad? Lahat po sila nasa abroad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tapos kayo lang po ang nasa Pilipinas? Ako kayo. lang po. In Bakit po kayo nagstay <laughs> sa Pilipinas? I cannot imagine living elsewhere eh, than the Philippines. Mm -hmm. I had access already to um, a green card. I did mm -hmm. not accept it. Kasi bagamat I was very happy in a university town like uh, Ann Arbor, Michigan, no? when you go out, they still parang make sure na you feel that you're not part of them. Kaya sabi ko, I will never feel at home anywhere else but the Philippines. So sabi ko nga, it's a lonely life here because um, it's just me and my two children and everyone else is abroad, but this is home to me. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Saan niyo po nakuha yung hilig niyo sa pag-aaral? Well, um, tingin ko because uh, my mom was um, a teacher, my lola was a teacher, and both grandfathers on both sides were also lawyers. Mm -hmm. So parang uh, at home, my grandmother, my maternal grandmother, was a very big influence. She was big into reading. And I remember na nine years old pa lang ako, binabasa ko yung mga books niya. Eh, maraming sex dun sa mga books niya. Mm -hmm. Nung nalaman ng lola ko na binabasa ko yung mga books niya na maraming sex, pinapagalitan niya ako. <laughs> Pero sabi ko sa kanya, lola, Eh, paano po binabasa kung dapat hindi ko basahin? Binabasa <laughs> <laughs> niya. Pero nabalitaan ko kasi, 3-4 years old, grade 1 na kayo. Inadrop. Opo. Nagkamali yung nanay ko ng bilang kasi we're 6 and my mom has always been a working mom. no? Mm -hmm. So she, I guess, no, forgot when I was actually born and enrolled me a year earlier. So initially, I thought I had a learning disability kasi grade 1 hindi ako makabasa. Pero kaya naman pala hindi ako makabasa, I was 4. So when I became grade 2, nakabasa na, ayun na. From last section, I went na to the honor section. Ano yung pinaka-paborito niyong subject na nag-aaral kayo? Eh talagang social sciences. Mm -hmm. so, bata pa lang talaga ako. I love social sciences, I love geography. Kaya ngayon talaga ang passion ko is traveling. I love history. Mm -hmm. yeah. Paano po kayo na linya dun sa pag-take ng law? Bata pa kayo, gusto niyo na maging lawyer? Well, alam mo kasi, Together with my grandparents, I was raised by a spinster aunt who, does, who just died no, um, three weeks ago. And uh, she was a state prosecutor, a fiscal. Now, um, she was a very good fiscal. She handled all the sensational cases of her time. Yung Batay Arson case, yung babae na tinagtad, and even the, I think, the Marian de la Riva rape case. No? Hindi siya nagsisecurity. Ang dinadala niya ako kasi yung mga makalumang tao, they honor the saying na you have to spare women and children. So she felt na when I was with her, she was safe. So since I would go with her at yung mga panahon na yun, uso pang marathon hearing from morning to evening, I had dispensation from the judge na matulog sa last row of the court kasi they go on through the evenings. No? So I guess because I was exposed to that kind of a lifestyle, I had no choice. When it was time to decide ko anong gagawin ko sa buhay ko, it was just lawyering. No? And you know, when I entered law school and there was yung trial practice, it was so natural kasi nga I slept through direct and cross examination uh, during my childhood. Parang no? nag-OGT na kayo, bata pa lang kayo. <laughs> bata pa lang ako, alam ko na ano nangyayari. No? So to me, it was really nothing new. When I was in law school, parang everything was familiar. And uh, it was like being fish in water. Mm -hmm. Third year high school pa lang. Talagang kabata-makabayan ako and I was mouthing slogans already. No? 
And um, I became a student leader. Mm -hmm. um, when I entered UP College, I became vice chairman of the Freshman Council. No? Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, with the support of Patamak Bayan. But there came a point na as vice uh, president of the Freshman Council, ang sistema kasi nung KM, kinakailan sumunod ka, meron silang collective leadership. Hindi mo kilala, alam kung sino yung nagdidikta. So sabi ko, why do I have to follow everything that the collective leadership tells me to do? Why do I even have to mouth what they say? Tapos napapansin ko, everything was slogan. So I started questioning. And that was when they expelled me. Kasi yung Kabata Makabayan is actually the youth arm of the CPP NPA. Mm. So um, ako naman, I don't make an issue of the fact na talagang we need to do a lot pa to um, further the ends of um, democracy. No? Pero ang ayaw ko lang is unang-una, yung collective leadership. Bakit hindi pwede mag-isip yung tao for himself? At pangalawa, yung continuous na adherence nila to armed struggle. Sa loob-loob ko naman, eh, epektibo naman itong parliamentary struggle. Marami mm -hmm. naman silang legal fronts na nakakahalan sila ng mga representante. Democracy works. O dinarong mamamayan naman ako, nailik ako sa Congress. O dinarong mamamayan ako, tumatakbo sa Senado. Bakit hindi natin daanin sa mga mapapayapang pamamaraan? Kasi mm -hmm. ultimately, sino bang pinapatay ng mga NPA? Ang pinapatay nila, mahihirap din kasi sino ba namang mayaman ang magiging sundalo? Mm -hmm. Eh, ang mga pinapatay naman ng NPA, mga ordinary mga mamamayan, kapwa mm -hmm. mahirap. So parang, I do not understand bakit kinakailang pang gumamit ang dahas. And that was really our breaking point. Turning point in your life. Uh, turning oh. point in my life. And that's why I had to go to the U.S. Mm -hmm. it, it was not so much because I was an activist, but because I was the first to actually leave the uh, mainstream uh, left. And they did not like it. Kadormate niyo rin po si VP Lenny. No? Kadormate ko rin sa kalayaan si VP Lenny. No? In fact, um, we were not very good friends, but we were more than acquaintance. No? Kasi yung best friend ko, si uh, deceased, now deceased congressman uh, Rodel Batucabe, no? we were best friends even in pre-law during our freshman year, was Bicolano. And because we were best friends, syempre yung mga fellow Bicolanos niya sa, sa dorm, nakilala ko rin. And mm -hmm. of course, that's how I knew Lenny Robredo. Yung sa Congress po, sabi nyo, there was an interview where you said na those were the happiest moments in your life when you were in Congress. Alam mo, totoo yan. Kasi una-una, ang kultura, you're all barkada. Kaya nga, although I was a rather controversial person, marami doon ang mga controversial personalities, first day pa lang, beso-beso na sa lahat. Mm -hmm. Kasi in kultura, you know, it's, it's 300 people. Not everyone is in the podium all the time. So most of the time, beso-beso kayo. It was like high school, no? Mm -hmm. So, it was really a, a happy time, no? mm -hmm. and it was my happy place. Wala kang kalaban sa, sa kongreso, everyone is just having a good time. Pero, you can work as hard as you, you want, and you can work as little as you want. Pero ako naman, I took advantage. No? Dahil alam ko naman na most of them naman are there to bring home the projects to their districts, konti lang naman talaga interested in legislation, I really push my legislation and I'm happy to say, Na even as a first termer, I had about 10 of my bills translated into law. Ano po yung pinaka proud ka yung bill? Ay, it's definitely universal health care. Alam mo, unang nakatikim ako ng universal health care when I studied in England. Diabetic kasi ako, even as a, um, a student, a master of student of law. Pagdating ko doon, nasyak ako na pinapunta ako ng uh, community nurse ko, hiningi ang prescription ko, at ibinigay sa akin ang prescription ko for pound fifty administrative fee. Tapos lahat ng aking mga tests, regular, regular tests, lahat libre. So that was my first taste of universal health care. Pero sa isip-isip isip, isip ko, hindi natin kaya sa Pilipinas yan kasi hindi nga tayo kasing yaman ng England. But 20 years later, when I was invited in Thailand by a classmate in London, abay, dinala ko sa launch ng universal health care sa Thailand. So sabi ko, kung kaya ng Thailand, bakit hindi kaya ng Pilipinas? Mm -hmm. And then, my mother came home from the U.S. I took care of her for the five, uh, for last five years of her life. Alam mo ba, nasimot siya. Because she had dialysis three times a week. When she died, the day she died was the day when she absolutely ran out of cash. It was as if ayaw niya maging pahirap sa akin. No? And then I realized, kung yung mami ko, who was not poor, who had savings, who had inheritance, nasimot because of um, cost of healthcare in the Philippines, paano na yung ordinary mamamaya, no? They simply died because of poverty. Kaya naisip ko yung universal healthcare, it's, it's high time that government actually pays up because that's an obligation of the state to promote the right to health. When, when I was sponsoring the speech, um, I had tears in my eyes because um, I knew um, how difficult it is to get sick. And she died on the absolute last day when she ran out of cash. That to me was very, 
that was really the ultimate love of my mother. Parang she just willed herself to die para hindi ka mahirapan. Mm -hmm. And then 2018, you became the spokesperson. Yes, yes. Of the president. What yes. was that like when you were approached to be the spokesperson? Nang dalawang isip ba kayo o tinang tinanggap nyo right away? No, talaga nang humindi ako. Ah. Kasi alam mo ang totoo niyan. I knew the president before. Tapos yung maganda ng massacre, tinutulungan na niya ako, binibigyan niya ako ng transportation at security pagpupunta kami dun sa crime scene. Pero it was completely unexpected nung tumawag siya mismo inviting me kasi unang-una, I did not support him in um, 2016. Mm -hmm. Oo. At alam niya yon. So sabi ko, Mr. President, ang dapat na i-recruit sa cabinet, someone who supported you in the elections. And for spokesperson, dapat someone who knows you inside out. Mm -hmm. e sabi niya, hindi. I want you. I'm your fan. Apparently, there was an incident na pareho kami nasa pal plane and it was delayed and it was lunchtime. So I negotiated for lunch for everyone. <laughs> Tapos, kinalabit na lang niya ako. Sabi niya, ang galing mo talaga. Sabi ko, hindi, nandiyan ka pala, mayo. <laughs> ang nangyari was, since he was inviting me, meron kasi akong foundation na for the past 30 years, we have been running therapeutic centers for urban, urban poor people. This is something that I don't publicize normally, no? Pero we are the poorest of the poor, and then it's therapeutic communities. It's drug rehab. So, nandito yung co-founder ko na Swiss. Sabi ko, kausapin natin si Presidente because after all, he's recruiting me. And let's give him um, an alternative no, to um, the drug situation. But this is the reason why I've never accepted a drug case in my life. Kasi I know how bad the drug problem is because the, I work in the communities. Mm -hmm. So napunta kami kay Presidente, we explained na um, this is how we deal with it. It's a, it's a reality. We know it's a very violent life and that, um, but there is a way out because it's a faith-based um, therapeutic community. You know, he agreed with our approach. He agreed that like um, his mother thought that rehabilitation will not work without a faith component. What's the best thing about being a spokesperson of the president? Well, you're seen, number one. And ako naman, when I accepted it, alam ko rin na importante kasi yung freedom of information then. No? It's also a human right. Mm -hmm. And um, sabi ko nga, tinanggap ko yung position na yun, um, because I knew that um, there was also a level of misunderstanding as far as the president was concerned. And I thought that perhaps I could help fill that gap. What's the worst thing about being the spokesperson? Being hated by those uh, who hate the president being hated more by those who hate the president. By association? By association. Actually, it's a thankless job because those who love the president love him despite you. It's not because of me. They love him because they've always loved him. But those who hate him hate me even more. So how do you handle the hate? Nothing. I just accept it. Kasi, before I became spokesperson, lahat ng mga nadidemand ng periodista for libel, I defend them. Lahat ng mga vloggers na kinukulong, not just in the Philippines, but abroad, Vietnam and Thailand included, I defend them. So I'm a firm believer in freedom of expression. Kasi, kahit anong kasi nung ulitin sabihin mo dyan, meron naman tayong faculties to ascertain the truth from the falsity, no? So I have to walk the talk, no? I've, I've, I've stood for freedom of expression. I need to live with it. What's the biggest misconception about you? Well, the conception is that I'm a a clone of the president. Hindi, I have my own views. Kaya lang, when I was speaking on behalf of the president, I was confident that on areas that we don't agree, alam nila yung position ko because I was a congressman eh. Hmm. For instance, death penalty. I voted against it. So alam nila kung ano talaga yung paninindigan ko. Lowering age of criminal responsibility, I voted no also. So alam nila yung paninindigan ko dyan, no? I have my own personal convictions which um, are a matter of public record and which I've written about because I have more than 30 published um, joint articles no, on these uh, different topics. Mm. Speaking of controversies, you've had your own share. Dami. Lalo na nung pandemic. Dami, dami. The protocols, yung with the dolphins, well, they're like mo, this. Oh, alam mo, alam mo. Alam mo talaga, yung mga kritiko kasi, at the time of pandemic, they wanted to politicize everything. You know, what I did in Subic, I breached no laws. Why? Because that was the first day of GCQ, if I'm not mistaken, in Bataan. And I'm from Bataan. In fact, after this, I go to Bataan. No? Um, so there was nothing wrong with it. Pero they made a big thing out of it. Why? Because I was a spokesperson of the president. And if they can't hit the president, they could hit him through me. Mm -hmm. Eh, ako naman, malinis sa konsyensya ko. Eh, I'm a lawyer eh. Mm -hmm. 
Basta ako alam ko I'm in full compliance, the hell do I care what you think or say? Basta alam ko tama ako. Apo. Kasi hindi ka po pwede na living your life through public opinion. Hindi. Basta ako, I'm in compliance with everything. Bahala ko sa buhay ninyo. So what's your reaction po when they make memes about you, when they try to make fun of you? Well, many of them try to make fun of me, but it actually became funny and it, it endeared me. Many of these memes actually endeared me to the people. No? Mm -hmm. It softened my image. So I'm even thankful for those who created the memes thinking that um, people will hate me for them. Like yung, yung dolphin. Di ba naging cartoon character pa ako doon? <laughs> oh my goodness. No? Talagang sabi ko, so, in amazing. So, in Yes, what do you do? No? In oh. the first place, that's freedom of expression. Pero I'm, I'm assured reassured na even if some people started them out of hate, people did not accept it as um, being hateful. They mm -hmm. just, you know, they thought it was endearing in fact. No? So, ano po nakakagalit sa inyo kung hindi kayo nagagalit sa mga ganun bagay? Yung mis, mis, misrepresentation, yung misquotations. Yan talaga. Yung mga times na talagang nagpintig ang aking tenga. Kasi nga, I'm so firmly committed to freedom of expression, but there has to be responsibility. Huwag mong babaluktutin yung sinasabi ang numero unong pinupintriya po nila sa inyo at itinitira nila sa inyo is you were an advocate for human rights victims, hindi ho ba? Tapos, ang sinasabi nila ngayon, sumama kayo sa slate ng unity ni Bongbong Marcos. Yan ang binabato nila sa inyo. Well, unang-una nga, wala naman ako nakita ang kahit anong kasalanan ni Bongbong Marcos. Bakit naman, kung ano yung tingin nila na kasalanan ng ama, bakit kinakailangan pagbayaran ng anak? That's not fair. Kasi ako, as spokesperson, may mga tao na Ganun din, no? I'm guilty by association. Remember when I was in New York running for an ILC post, sinasabi nila war criminal ako only because I was a spokesperson of the president. So I know how it feels na sisisihin ka for the acts of others. Assuming, totoo yung sinasabi nila. Pero ako naman, let's not even talk about senior. Kasi ako naman, I'm supporting the junior. Um, so to me, I have no problems with that. No? So what made you run for Senate? Number one, it's really a conviction that no matter what happens, kinakailangan talaga, we must not lose our focus on the right to livelihood. Naalala mo, yung mga kalaban ko, linik out nila yung galit na galit ako sa mga ilang mga doktor. Yes. Nung dahil, September oh, 2021. Oh, 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 dahil ang gusto ng doktor, mag-lockdown na naman. Nagalit ako doon dahil sabi ko, you know, I acknowledge that the medical frontliners are our modern-day heroes. Pero they have to also acknowledge na pagdating sa policy making, what we're promoting is total health. Number one, we need to reduce number of COVID cases. But number two, we also need to reduce the incidence of poverty. Mm -hmm. At kaya nga, wala namang choice yan. Hindi naman po pwede na we're free from COVID, gutom naman yung taong bayan. So that's the context. Eh, apparently, akala ng mga haters ko, eh, that will make me unpopular. But you know, in one month after that was leaked, my conversion rate went up from 9 to 18 na doble. And that's the only thing that I could think of was responsible. Apparently, many people agreed. So parang, okay, since many people agreed on my position, we might as well make this our primary platform. No? Livelihood first, no matter what. No? Pero second, um, I have unfinished business. Kasi talaga, I really like my role as a um, lawmaker. And sometimes, I don't know if I should have stayed on. Kasi I had 200 plus bills. Mm -hmm. Sampu lang ang nagawa ko, no? So, yung unfinished business ko, I want to make them into laws again, no? So, there's the right to food. We want to eradicate poverty within six years, no? There's the right to water. You know, when I filed that in um, 2016, people ignored it. But look what's happening now. We're running out of potable water. So, even six years ago, I knew this was going to happen. And we need to act fast, no? And then, meron pang freedom of information. I've been a primary exponent. Tapos, yung pinaka-importante pa, Whistleblower Act. Kasi alam mo yung kaso ng corruption and kaso ng killings, hindi talaga makukonvict yan unless you have a witness. And more often than not, because these are crimes done in secrecy, yung co-conspirator mo lang ang pwede maging testigo. And without a whistleblower act, hindi sila makakatestigo without, of course, being granted immunity. So that's part of the benefits that we give to whistleblowers. Anong klaseng senator ang kinakailangan ng Pilipinas? Well, kailangan maintindihan ng taong bayan that a senator is a lawmaker. And the laws, of course, are policies. You know, it goes through, ano bang batas, bakit sinusunod? Because they promote what is good for us as Filipinos, as human beings. Hindi sila nagpapatupad ng batas. 
sila ang gagawa ng batas, sila ang gagawa ng pulisiya. So, kinakailangan alam ang batas. You don't have to be a lawyer, but you know, you need to know what the law is. Number two, you need to use the law to effect change. No? Kinakailangan magkaroon ng mas malawak ang pagbabako sa pabanggitan ng batas. At yun sanang tignan ng taong bayan. Huwag lang yung kasikatan. Kung hindi, ano bang pulisiya ang gagawin yan? Paano niya babaguhin yung lipunan? Anong mabuting mabibigay niya sa bansa sa pamamagitan ng mga bagong pulisiya? Hmm. Yun ang aking pakiusap. Alam niyo po, pag tinignan namin yung academic background ninyo, record ninyo, lahat outstanding talaga. So, ang tanong ng maraming tao, bakit pa po kayo sumasayaw pag may rally? Well, kasi akala nila, um, hindi ako pwede magsayaw. <laughs> Bakit mo kayo sumasayaw? Kasi, eh, sa achievement pa lang, ang dami nyo na itong ipamalaki. Alam mo, iniisip ko, anong mawawala sa akin? Alam naman nila na 15 years ako nagturo ng law sa, ng, sa, sa UP. Alam naman nila, naging president ako ng Asian Society of International Law. Alam naman nila, may advanced degree ako in law. So parang yung pagdating sa, sa kakayahan na pag-iisip, hindi na issue yan eh. Oh. Pero hindi alam ng tao, masayahin din ako. At saka, mahilig talaga akong magsayaw. Bahala sila. <laughs> Ano po bang ginagawa nyo pag spare time nyo? Kasi balita ko, 20 years na kayong license na paddy dry, yes, uh, diver. Yes, I'm a very avid diver. You know, every opportunity I have, I go diving. Kaya I'm always in the sea. So, huwag nilang mamasain, mamasamain, no? na talagang I'm always um, um, in the beach, no? because that's, that's really my passion. Alam mo, diving kasi parang is a form of meditation. You know, you have to be very relaxed. Mm -hmm. And it's beautiful down there. And of course, I'm a Christian. So, parang when you see the beauty of um, the underwater life, you know, it's, it's a form of worshiping God for the beauty of His creation. No? Mm -hmm. And um, number two, it's also a source of livelihood. Napakadaming nakasalalay dyan sa diving industry mm -hmm. para hanap buhay. No? Mm -hmm. And number three, iba yung camaraderie amongst divers. Maybe because you know it's also a risky hobby. Mm -hmm. So, you build very strong bonds with, with people that you dive with. No? Mm -hmm. What is one thing that you want people to know about you? Well, that I am a normal human being. That um, I love life. And that um, the reason why I've survived through many ordeals in this life is because I, I laugh at things. And I laugh at problems. And I always think that um, there will always be a solution no matter what, um, what problem comes your way. No?